But that's what I've come to talk to today. The, as I was praying and preparing this for this message a couple months ago, I just kept coming back to faith and talking about that. What is faith? What? Why? Um, as we change direction, that's what I want to come and talk to you today about. Is just faith. And that's gonna be my first point. It's uh, what is faith? Oftentimes in English, we can have um, some idioms, you know, like take a leap of faith, where, hey, I need to go for a new job or maybe move to a different city, and so I take this leap of faith. And so it's kind of a term of, well, I have a hope, so I'm going to follow through with it, and that's the action I'm taking. But it kind of is an uncertainty. Um, you can be described as a man or a woman of faith. You, what, what is your faith or what is your background? But... I think sometimes when we use these phrases, it might miss a more simple understanding, and that's what I want to start off with today. So if you have your Bible, uh, if you'd open up to Exodus 17, if not, I brought mine, and I'll read it, and then I'm going to also flip over to Matthew 8. So if you want to put a marker or a thumb there, and we'll get there in a minute. I'm going to read this story that uh, the Israelites are moving through the wilderness, and God had promised them this certain amount of land. And they came up against a people called the Amalekites who weren't going to let the people through. And so they went to war with them. So I'm going to start in verse 8 of chapter 17. Um, the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Come, choose some of our men to go out and fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff. I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. And as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites with the army and the sword. And then at the last verse of this story, verse 15, so Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner, because they had won this fight. I chose this because you could make a nice homily, a nice story of saying, here's faith that the, the Israelites came up against the people that was promised to them to have a victory, and they went and fought. That could be a, a form of a faith, but the difference, uh, I want to take a different direction this morning by saying, this is the first time in the Hebrew Bible that the word faith is used. And it's not in the English because it can have different meanings in Hebrew, but the word in Hebrew is imunah. Um, sorry, I, I was, it's been a while since I preached, so I was getting a little nervous, kind of jumbling around, so forgive me of that. I'll pray. I know, I, I really love loft, living our faith together, that's a fantastic idea, and I'm just so excited, so now I see all y'all's bright, shiny, happy faces, and so it's like, oh, so I'm going to calm down, and start a little bit over, and just bear with me, I promise I've got something good. The reason why I chose this passage is because it's the first time faith is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. The word is emunah. So kind of give me some feedback, let's say it together, like emunah. Not bad, emunah. Perfect. And here in this passage, it's translated when Moses held his hands steady, steadfast. It comes from this root word, emet, which in Hebrew means stone. And so here, it's a picture of, here's Moses when he is steadfast, when he's unmoving, unwavering. That's the Hebrew word for faith. It's a little bit different than take a leap of faith, like, hey, I'm thinking about going here, I'm thinking about trying this, and so I'm going to go into the unknown. Rather, Moses and the Israelites had a promise from God, and he was unwavering. He didn't move. Sometimes in Hebrew, imunah is translated as trust. Faith can have this untangible aspect about it sometimes when we use it in English, but I'd say faith is nothing more than just trusting what God said. He's given you a promise. If he's told you who he is, or his character, or his name, faith is nothing more than unmoving on what God has said. 
Faith can be trust. It's a synonym. My first point is that faith is trust. It's belief. So if you put your hand in the Matthew 18, flip over there real quick. So I'm going to start in verse 5. This is the story of a centurion who had a servant that was sick. And so he came to Jesus and said, please heal my servant. And so when Jesus is in Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and with, in terrible suffering. And Jesus said, go, I, I will heal him. The centurion said, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I'm a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to the following, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. And then it goes on and, you know, go, what you've said will be done for you. And the centurion goes home and he finds, out, finds that his servant was healed that very hour. But when Jesus says, I have not found in all of Israel someone with such great faith, I think you can interject and put, Jesus said, I've not found anyone to trust me who I say I am, that I am the Son of God, that I've come to heal, that I've come to save. And so here's a man who heard the stories about Jesus and came to him and said, I need healing, and you can do it. I trust you. And Jesus said, no one else has faith like this man. Because faith is trust. Faith is belief in what God says and who he says he is. It's that steadfastness. It's that picture of Moses holding up his hands and saying, this is the promise of God. I'm unmoving. It's like a stone. It doesn't move. Another story that I have uh, that Jesus makes the same thing is that he, in Mark chapter 2, he's preaching in a room where he's talking to a number of uh, Jewish leaders and people, and the crowd is so large around the room that they can't get to him. So some friends of a paralyzed man lower him through the roof. And Jesus sees their faith, it says in Mark 2. He sees their action. He says, son, your sins are forgiven. Well, those around him are saying, well, who says you can forgive sins? And he replies, What's easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Or rise up, take your mat, and go home. And the paralyzed man is healed. But I bring up that story because this one verse in Mark chapter 2, it says in verse 3, when Jesus saw their faith of the friends lowering the man, these friends trusted Jesus to be who he said he was. And so when I asked my first point of what is faith, and faith is trust, each time Jesus brings up the word faith throughout the Gospels, it's people acting on the Word of God with, an unste with a steadfast, unmoving, unwavering action. And so, as I build up these next two points, so I have three points today for you. First one, what is faith? Faith is trust. And the next point is, well, what does God want with our faith? If I was going to preach the most sermons I've heard, let me back up. Most sermons you've heard about faith start maybe in Hebrews 11, which is, for those that have read that before, is a chapter on faith. And it says things like, without faith it is impossible to please God. For those that come to him must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of those that don't really seek him. Um, or, uh, again, thank you all for your patience. Oh, man. I think the last time I preached was probably like, years ago, and so when Chan said, would you like to, say, that'd be wonderful, because I missed it, but in Hebrews 11, it starts off with, now faith is being sure of what we do not see, and is the evidence of the unseen, in the sense that what God wants from us is this evidence that people can see, it's not something that's abstract, but the steadfast, unmoving lifestyle based on God's word and his promises is what God wants from us. Because in John chapter 6, uh, verse 27, some Jews asked Jesus, said, what is, what are, excuse me, what must we do to do the works of God? And Jesus said, believe in him and the one whom he has sent. That's John 6, 27 through 28. Again, it's just what God wants from you is to trust him. It's very simple. There's that famous verse in Ephesians. No, we are saved by faith 
through grace. It is not of yourself. We are saved by trusting that God is who he says he is and that he has good things for us, that he has a grace over your life, forgiveness for your sins. I, that's amazing. I'm someone here, but I just want to say that that's my first two points. I want to bring us to a home on a third point that's going to take a little bit longer to talk about. Uh, faith is trust. The second point is that God just wants you to trust him. When you trust him, that is grace being poured out into your life because he has forgiveness for our wrongdoings, for our mistakes, for our shortcomings, for things that we want to beat ourselves up over. But he also has a plan for your future and his promises of that he is Savior, he is Redeemer, he is faithful, he is friends, he is your friend. Um, I had my notes that I kind of fumbled through. Uh, and that passage in Exodus 17 where it says, the Lord is our banner. There's so many names of God in the Bible that can build up our faith as we trust in who we know he is. And the Lord is our banner might not relate to us today because what that means is a, is a symbol for war back then for these Israelites because they were people who fought in groups of families. So you'd have the family of Judah over here and you'd have the family of Benjamin over here, whatever Israeli tribe family could think of, and they'd wreck these banners. And when you went to fight, that's where you would fight. And you really kind of wanted to fight by families that were stronger, good at fighting, than, you know, for protection, for warfare, for skill. But when Moses sees that they beat the Amalekites, he says, you know, the banner that we actually fight on, who you want to stay next to, who you want to go to war with, is the Lord. He is the Lord, our banner. And that was another act of trust and faith that Moses had for the Israelites. Um, I want to bring that point up because... I didn't have it in my notes, but I was just sitting here as I was, as I was talking. I was thinking about that sometimes um, we try to do it on our own when I'm talking about trusting in God, but the Lord is the one who fights for you in the terms of if there is uncertainty over forgiveness in your life, if there is struggles or hardships that you're trying to overcome in your Christian walk, the Lord is once already forgiven. The Lord is once already made that victory and way through Christ. Um, and I really hope that you can hear me when I say God just wants you to trust in him and follow what he's asked you to do. My third point that I've prepared on faith uh, kind of falls on that theme because for me, in my walk, there's things that can tear down or attack or diminish my own trust in God, my own belief in God. Not from a standpoint of that I don't believe that he is or that he isn't a good God or that he's not active in my life, but rather things in my life, whether it be relationships or job or finances or health or just seeing wrong things in the world can attack our faith or can hurt our faith or maybe will feel like God is not near, like the song that we sung, whether it's for you or for a loved one that you know, there's things that are in this world that will hurt our trust in God. Is God who he says he is? Could be our own thoughts, could be outside influences. Well, why did this have to happen to that person? Or how can we explain that bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people? It can kind of hurt our faith. And so... My third point is, how can we help encourage and build our trust in God? I alluded to it earlier, that learning the character and learning the names of God, like the Lord is our banner, is one way. But a method throughout Scripture uh, that is used to increase faith, to build faith, is the act of remembering. Um... We were singing earlier that song that was just kind of reflective and very uh, solemn. And there was a line in there that says, And remember the better days. Uh, if you're here last week and you heard George's sermon on Psalms 30, it's a psalm of thanksgiving. It starts off with, Who redeemed my life from the pit and has done good things for me. Or you can go to Psalms 103, verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and remember all his benefits, and goes on and says, who's forgiven all your iniquities and healed all your diseases and brought your life up from the destruction and put good things in your mouth. 
the songs are full of remembrance and because I think and I believe and I know in my own life that when I think about what God has done for me in times that he's been there for me it can increase your faith um, the reason why I wanted to talk about the remembering is because when it's a struggle in life, when your faith is feel like it's being diminished, when there's a hardship coming on, I think God has put things in your life that you can start to reflect back on. Uh, for example, an easy one for some of us here might be, what was it like when you first accepted Christ in your life? Some of us have a date, some of us have a time, some of us know right where we were, some of us are just like, I've always done that, but that feeling that you know that Christ died for your sins and rose again because he loved you. That's a reflection. But I want to kind of get you all engaged. I would like to ask, you know, we have the Psalms that can remember things that God's done for us. You can remember that, but, you know, perhaps in community there's also a form of remembering too. So I would ask, have anyone here, if I raise a hand, have you ever experienced a miracle? Have you ever had a dream you knew was from God? Have you ever heard God's voice in your life, whether you're reading scripture or song or, or audible or inaudible? Has anyone here known that God's spoken to you? There were several hands that went up around the room. And with that, I would say, with those that have those types of experience, whatever movement of God has done in your life, take time to reflect on that. That will build your faith. That will build your trust in God. So if you are working towards something in your life, hey, I want to stop this, or I want to start doing this for God, or I feel deficient in this area of my faith in the sense that I keep stumbling or failing, when that temptation comes, you can go to the Psalms for remembrance. You can go to um, community for remembrance, or whatever God has done in your own life. Because that's an act that can help increase your trust in God. Because trust is something built in any relationship through time and through interaction. Is that, is that falling out? I'm kind of choppy, but is that? Okay. Thank you. I know. I'm... Thank you. <laughs> kind of stare at some blank faces. And um, I just wanted to say that. If you have need to trust God more, look back in your past on what he has done for you. And that will help you trust him for whatever situation you're going through. Because he is faithful, he is good, he does have a plan, and he is gracious. Um, which will kind of lead me to this last thing. I was uh, told we're having community today, and it's wonderful. Um, because it's a neat act of building faith because at the Last Supper, Jesus took this cup and he shared it and said, this is my blood, do this as a tradition for me. Or he said, do this as a religious structure for me. No, in, in the Last Supper, what Christ did, he goes, this is the cup of the new covenant, which is my blood. In the same way he took the bread and he said, you broke the bread, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I think what Christ has done in our life is given us the Lord's Supper here that we're going to partake in, in a minute as an act to build our faith together as community. Before we do that, I want you to take a moment to, to reflect in your own life. How is your heart towards God? Because I'm here to say that He's a good God and He loves you. Any shortcomings, any failures, any wrongdoings, he's taken care of by his son's sacrifice on the cross. And he rose again. If you've experienced that, if you've had put your faith in that, there is something in your heart that you can go back to and remember. And that's what we're doing here at Community Today, is remembering together as a community. We come to the Lord's table and say, wow, Christ's body was broken for me. His blood was spilled for me to cover my sins. And it's something exciting to build your faith for Whatever you're going through in life. Maybe it's good times. I've been talking about bad times, but good times we should remember him too. Um, so what I'd like to do, we're going to take 30 seconds of silence. It's going to be kind of 
unnerving because to be still for that long, no noise, can be disturbing. But I want you to, I don't know, some people get fidgety, some people look around, some people just saying, hey, I don't, but really, if you could, for 30 seconds, I'll watch a clock. Reflect in your own life. Maybe you need to remember something that God's done for you. Maybe you know God has a promise in your life that he's given you that you need to trust him for. Maybe you don't know this wonderful thing that I'm talking about, that when you trust Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, you don't know what that's like. Maybe that's something you want to consider. Maybe God's tugging at your heart right now to ask someone for that decision. When we have come up here and take communion, there will be people in the back that will pray with anyone for anything. And you can simply ask them, hey, I've never really had a relationship with Jesus. I've never trusted him that he died for my sins. What's that like? And they can pray for you or answer any questions that you might have. Or if you have prayer for anything else, they're there for you. But as you come up to this table, remember that this is Christ's body that was broken for you. And that this was his blood that was spilled so that you could enjoy and have the life that he wanted you to.